Hello everyone, it's Good Friday, a day that marks the death of Christ. And tonight, we are going to reflect deeply on the sufferings and death of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. It is a simple service where we read from the Gospel of Matthew, the story of the crucifixion. We want you to experience this service. So step away from any distractions. You may want to dim your lights or light a candle. Create a tone that engages not just your minds, but also your hearts. And together in community, let us remember on this somber night, the saving power and work of God in and through Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? God of our salvation, who are we that you are mindful of us, that you would save us? You know our sins, our shortcomings, our downfalls, and our insecurities and fears, and yet you still love us. We bow in reverence and humility on this night. Thank you for your grace and mercy and love. Strengthen our faith and forgive our betrayals as we enter the way of your passion. In the spirit of Jesus Christ, amen. Jesus prays in Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. He said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He said to them, I am deeply grieved even unto death. Stay awake with me. And going a little farther away, he threw himself on the ground. And he prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what is my will, but your will be done. Then he came to the disciples and he found them asleep. And he said to Peter, So you could not stay awake even one hour. Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and he prayed, My Father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and he found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, <sighs> saying the same words. Then he came back to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. My betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd. 
with swords and clubs from the chief priest and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, greetings rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him.
Now, the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, he deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him saying, prophesy to us, you Messiah. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out onto the porch, another servant girl saw him and said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Jesus.
Now, at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, she said, because I have suffered a great deal because of a dream I had about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But the crowd shouted all the more, Let him be crucified! So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and he washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood is to be upon us and on our children. So he released Barabbas to them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, 
which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. About three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again and with a loud voice and breathed his last. Oh, 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 oh,
Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son.